Hello everyone and welcome to this, my video on dominance matrices. Oh my goodness, if you thought the last few videos were exciting, you better strap yourself in because, yeah, no, this one's not going to be exciting either. Um, basically, it's part of our matrices module for the Year 12 General Maths course. And you're going to say, General Maths? Hold on a moment, I'm in America. And I'm like, don't worry about it. Dominance matrices are important all around the world. <laughs> Still not really. My name's Darren from Maths Guru. You say where? I'm going to say maths guru. There we go. M A F F S guru.com. Uh, my little corner of the interweb where effectively all of these lessons and the downloadable notes you'll see behind me, or and uh, what else? I've got time codes and exam questions and uh, all sorts of things. Absolutely free to sign up is there to try and help you. And if you can uh, head over there, that would be great. Again, free to sign up. Just put uh, your email address in and etc. 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 What are we doing today? Be able to construct and interpret dominance matrices. Okay, that's fairly specific. Now, it is going to build on the previous stuff we have done. All right, so there are four or five videos prior to this again on massguru.com that you can watch that will really build up and build on the communication and the permutation and binary matrices and all the stuff we've learned that the foundations now the next chapter we're going to deal with basically takes this and runs with it way more real world way more practical and and actually quite tricky but let's let's get into the idea here um, with regards to dominance matrices and yes it has something to do with matrices now, before i get going can you do me a favor can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? I know, very needy, but if you can, it really does mean the world to me. That one little click from you basically just lets me know that people are watching. Um, and again, it's math content and my videos, come on, I'm not at all funny. And so basically turn around, who's gonna subscribe? Can you please be that one person? I mean, obviously don't tell people out loud. It'd be embarrassing, but please don't put it on Snapchat. Please put it on Snapchat and Instagram and TikTok and threads now. What is that all about? Um, just letting people know, because if it's helped you, hopefully it will help them. All right, again, what is this needy stuff? Now, what is a dominance matrix? Sport, I don't get it. Serious, absolutely serious, I'm British, yeah? Normally people over here in Australia go, oh, do you like the cricket? No, not really. Do you like football? No, not really, because I'm talking about soccer, the real football, not that one with odd shaped balls. Oh, can I say balls? <laughs> Moving on, a little bit inappropriate. Uh, but the point of it, I don't get sport. Never have done, never will do. And that was until Mr. Ted Lasso. Now, if you've not seen Ted Lasso, it's pretty good. <laughs> it nearly made me cry, so emotional. Moving on. But the point of it is, everything I know about soccer, I've actually learned from Ted Lasso. Now I still don't understand the offside rule, but that's a whole new discussion, all right? But the point of it is, I've got this rough idea that in sport, you sort of play against each other. And the whole point, seemingly, is about winning. Yeah, I like the idea of playing sport. It's not about the winning. All right, easy, Tiger, easy. But the point of it is, sport has all these strange rules, and it is, it's about dominance. And if we go to the uh, Premiership uh, and all these sort of league tables over in the UK, the whole point of it is, isn't it about who comes out on the top of the league. So we want to know effectively with team matches who comes out on top and that's really what a dominance matrix is. So here we go and uh, honestly the puns in this just don't stop uh, or start. Um, but here we go, there is a round robin. You see what I did there? That took hours to find that round robin. Um, now just assume we have five players. Five? Five players. Anna, Burgett, Kaz, Dai and Emma. Hmm who had played round robin tournament with a three on it. Uh, they played tennis to see who was the dominant best player. Now, don't go there with dominance. Let's, let's, not, let's keep it clean. The results were as follows. Anna defeated Kaz and Dai. Birgit uh, defeated Anna, Kaz and Emma. Kaz defeated Dai. Dai defeated Birgit and Emma defeated Anna, Kaz and Dai. What? Wouldn't it be great if we could show this in some sort of a diagram? Well, actually, we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put five dots because we like dots. They're easy to draw. Yeah, I'm not an artist, but I can draw a dot A, B, C, D and E. And exactly what I say behind me is if you uh, go to mathguru.com, you can download everything I'm writing on behind me, put it as part of your lesson notes, etc., etc., etc. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line between each of the people who played and an arrow to signify which one won. So if we start with Anna, Anna defeated Kaz. So I'm now going to draw a straight line from Anna to Kaz, he says. It wouldn't be lovely if that actually just stayed there. There's Anna to Kaz, and I'm going to draw an arrow this way. Now the arrow signifies who beat who, all right? So Anna beat Kaz, who else? Anna beat Dai. So again, I'm going to draw a straight line between the two of them. Is it going to do that? Yep. And I'm going to draw an arrow on. Congratulations. So that's the Anna. Burgett defeated Anna. So Burgett defeated Anna. So I'm going to draw a line between those two. And I'm going to do an arrow that way. Uh, Burgett defeated Kaz. 
he says, and also Emma. Where's Emma? Hello, Emma. How are you? I'm talking to this as if it's an actual person. God, God I should be committed. Kaz defeated Dai. Kaz defeated Dai. There we go, Dai. How are you? Yeah, very good. And uh, Dai defeated Burgett. Oh, my goodness. Poor Burgett. Yeah, oh, that wasn't straight, but anyway, uh, that's a bit of a curve. And again, the arrow's the important part. And Emma defeated Anna. Emma defeated Anna. Uh, oh, curved. Uh, Emma defeated Kaz. Uh, straight line. Yep. And arrow there. And Emma defeated Di. Right, there we go. Now, obviously, when I did this today with my group, one of my boys turned around and went, oh, it's a star. Okay, yes, it's a star, and it's very pretty. But what's more important here are the arrows. And again, I don't know what you're going to be asked to do in a sack. Who knows? Could they ask you to draw one of these? Why not? You've got the basis here. Will they give you one of these and ask you to interpret it? Who knows? But the idea is now we know how to turn sort of um, worded into a diagram. But this is a matrices course. So the question is, can we now turn this into a matrix that means the same thing? Well... I should go, go. So there we go, there's my diagram. All right, obviously this has been taken from the Cambridge General Maths Unit 3 and 4 textbook. And thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use your stuff. You guys rock and I love your textbooks. And no, I'm not endorsed by them. I just genuinely think that Cambridge have done some amazing stuff. But here is my diagram more normally. But how can I turn that into something more interesting?